Let's talk about Intermeba histolytica. Four species of Intermeba are morphologically indistinguishable, but molecular techniques shows that they are different species, and these include Intermeba histolytica, which is pathogenic, Intermeba dispar, which is harmless colonizer and more common, Intermeba moshkovsky, which is less common and its pathogenicity is uncertain, Intermeba bangladeshi, this is again uh, less common and its pathogenicity is uncertain. Amoebiasis is caused by intermeba histolytica because I told you it's the one which is pathogenic and it tends to occur in regions with poor socioeconomic conditions and poor sanitation. Geographical distribution. The parasite is present worldwide but most infections occur in Central America, Western South America, Western and Southern Africa, and the Indian subcontinent. Pathophysiology of amoebiasis. Intermeba species exist in two forms, the trophozoid and the cysts. The trophozoid can convert to a pre-cyst form with two nuclei that matures into a tetranucleated cyst. Right, so here you can see the trophozoid and the cysts. Right. The trophozoids have a broad bland pseudopodia, small eccentric karyosome, and irregular peripheral chromatin. The cyst has eight nuclei, and the chromatid bodies are less prominent. The trophozoids are actually motile. So the motile trophozoids feed on bacteria and tissues, reproduce and colonize the lumen and the mucosa of the large intestine and sometimes invade the tissues and organs called the extra-intestinal infections. We are going to talk about that. The trophozoid moves by extending creeping projections of cytoplasm called pseudopodia or false feet. The trophozoids predominate in liquid stools but rapidly die outside the body and if ingested would be killed by gastric acids, right? So it's, it's known as um, acid labile. Intermeba histolytica trophozoids can adhere to and kill colonic epithelial cells and polymorphonuclear leukocytes or polymorphonuclear cells um, and can cause dysentery with blood and mucus but with few polymorphonuclear cells in the stools. The trophozoids can secrete proteases that degrade the extracellular matrix and permit invasion into the intestinal wall and beyond. The trophozoid can spread via the portal circulation and cause necrotic liver abscesses. Infection may spread by direct extension from the liver to the right pleural space, lung or skin or rarely through the bloodstream to the brain and other organs. The cyst predominates in formed stools, right? So I said uh, trophozoids predominate in liquid stools. Cyst predominate in formed stools and is resistant uh, to destruction by the external environment. The cysts may spread directly from person to person or indirectly via food or water, right? So the root is called a uh, fecal oral root. And one more time, the cysts are the infective uh, forms or infective stage. Signs and symptoms of amoebiasis. Most people with amoebiasis are asymptomatic, but chronically pass cysts in stools, right? So they are actually infective, right? These uh, Cysts can 
infect other people, right? Symptoms that occur with tissue invasion in the colon usually develops one to three weeks after ingestion of cysts, and those symptoms include intermittent diarrhea and constipation, flatulence, cramping, abdominal pain. Tenderness over the liver or ascending colon and fever may develop, and stools may contain mucus and blood. Right, so uh, there are three main diseases which we can uh, uh, separate caused by intermeba histolytica, and uh, these diseases include amoebic dysentery, chronic amoebic infection of the colon, and liver abscess. Right, so let's talk about these one by one, starting with uh, amoebic dysentery. Amoebic dysentery is common in the tropics and manifests with episodes of frequent semi-liquid stools that often contain blood, mucus, and live trophozoids. Abdominal tenderness frequently accompanies amoebic colitis. Sometimes, fulminant colitis complicated by toxic megacolon or peritonitis may develop. Abdominal findings range from mild tenderness to frank abdominal pain with high fevers and toxic systemic symptoms. Between the relapses, symptoms diminish to recurrent cramps and loose or soft or soft stools, but emaciation and anemia may develop. Symptoms suggesting appendicitis may also occur. Surgery in such cases may result in peritoneal spread of amoebas. The second uh, case, chronic amoebic infection of the colon. Chronic amoebic infection of the colon can mimic inflammatory bowel disease and manifest as intermittent non dysentric diarrhea with abdominal pain, mucus, uh, flatulence, and weight loss. Chronic infection may also manifest as tender, palpable masses or annular lesions, the amebomas in the cecum and ascending colon. And last, the liver abscess. So these abscesses are usually single and they are found in the right lobe of the liver. It can manifest in patients who have had no prior symptoms and is more common among men than among women. And the ratio is uh, from uh, 7 as to 1 to 9 as to 1. Symptoms include pain or discomfort over the liver, uh, the right hypochondriac region, uh, which is occasionally referred to the right shoulder, as well as intermittent fevers, sweats, chills, nausea, vomiting, weakness, and weight loss. Jaundice is unusual, and if it's there, it could be lower grade. The abscess may perforate into the subphrenic space, a right pleural cavity, right lung, or other adjacent organs, for example, pericardium. Right, so uh, now we can talk about the life cycle. Right, so this is the life cycle of intermeba histolytica. Right, so there is uh, ingestion of the mature cyst, right, uh, via fecal oral route, yeah, either by uh, drinking contaminated water or eating contaminated food. Right, you can see um, the mature cyst here with uh, four nucleus. Right, so the first process is called excystation, right, conversion from the assist to trophozoid. So one trophozoid with four nuclei images and divides uh, three times and each nucleus divides once to produce eight trophozoids from each cyst. 
the trophozoids migrate to the large intestine. And in the intestine, there are two pathways, right? So uh, after the uh, tr a multiplication of the trophozoids by binary fission, there are two pathways. There is uh, invasive infection or reinfection and non-invasive infection, right? Let's start with the invasive infection. In this case, these trophozoids will reinvade into the what into the uh, intestinal mucosa again. And from there, it will go via the bloodstream, uh, infecting organs like liver, brain, and lungs, causing uh, abscesses there. The second pathway uh, is uh, n cystation. This will be conversion uh, from trophozoid to a cyst. Right? You can see an immature cyst here. And here you can see again with uh, two nuclei. And now with a four nuclei called quadrinucleated cyst, right? So uh, the cyst will exist the host in this two, right? So this pathway is the non-invasive infection. And if this if stool containing the cyst uh, get in contact with water or food, this is how the person get infected, right? You can pause and take a screenshot. Now let's talk about our diagnosis of amoebiasis. In case of intestinal uh, infection, microscopic examination, enzyme immunoassay of stools, molecular test for parasite DNA in the stool, and or serological testing are, are usually used right in intestinal infection. In case of extra-intestinal infections, imaging and serologic testing or therapeutic trial with amebicide, right? So uh, imaging, usually if you do CT in case of, um, in case of a liver abscesses. Okay, in uh, non-dysentric amebiasis, Right, this one is very important because non dysentric amoebiasis may be misdiagnosed as irritable bowel syndrome, regional enteritis, or diverticulitis. A right sided colonic mass may also be mistaken for cancer, tuberculosis, actinomycosis, or lymphoma. Amoebic dysentery may be confused with shigellosis, salmonellosis from salmonella, uh, schistosomiasis, or ulcerative colitis. In amoebic dysentery, stools are usually less frequent and less watery than those in bacillary dysentery. They characteristically contain tenacious mucus and flakes of blood. Unlike stools in shigellosis, salmonellosis, and ulcerative colitis, amoebic stools do not contain large numbers of white blood cells because the trophozoids lies them. Hepatic amoebiasis and amoebic abscess must be differentiated from other hepatic infections and tumors, right? So this is just the basic uh, uh, differential diagnosis. Diagnosis of amoebiasis is supported by finding amoebic trophozoids, cysts, or both in stools or tissues. However, pathogenic intermeba histolytica are morphologically indistinguishable from non-pathogenic uh, Indamoeba dispar as well as uh, Indamoeba Moskovsky and Indamoeba Bangladeshi, which are of uncertain pathogenicity. Right. So uh, remember in the introduction video, I told you something about uh, the Indamoeba eating erythrocytes. Right. So a mnemonic goes like this. Indamoeba eats erythrocytes, EEE. -E -E. In the amoeba, it's erythrocytes. So you can find uh, the erythrocytes inside 
the uh, inside the prophozoids of endamoeba histolytica. Immunoassays that detect endamoeba histolytic antigen in stools are sensitive and specific and are done to confirm the diagnosis. Specific DNA detection assays for intermeba histolytica using polymerase chain reaction are available at diagnostic reference laboratories and a very high sensitivity and specificity. Now, how do we treat amoebiasis? Initially, we can use a very common drug known as uh, metronidazole, right? This drug is also uh, used in, um, in anaerobic bacteria and also in H. pylori, right? It's a very common drug. And now there is a new drug called tenidazole, right? So these are the drugs which we can use uh, initially. And then... Uh, there are some drugs which are specific, the drugs which you can use for uh, asymptomatic uh, cases or insist eradication. And those are drugs include uh, iodoquinone, paromomycin, or diloxanide thyroid, right? So we can use these uh, to eradicate uh, the cysts. Metronidazole and tenidazole should not be given to pregnant women. Alcohol must be avoided because these drugs have a disulfiram like effect. In terms of gastrointestinal adverse effects, tenidazole is generally better tolerated than metronidazole. Therapy for patients with significant gastrointestinal symptoms should include rehydration with fluid and electrolytes and other supportive measures. We can actually prevent amoebiasis. How can we do that? Uncooked foods, including salads, vegetables, and potentially contaminated water and ice should be avoided, uh, especially in developing areas, because I told you, is very common in uh, areas where uh, there is a poor sanitation. Boiling water actually kills the intermeba histolytica cysts. The effectiveness of chemical disinfection with iodine or chlorine containing compounds depends on the temperature of the water and the amount of organic debris in it. Uh, we can also use our portable filters. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you feel like uh, the videos we are giving out are actually helpful, you are free to subscribe. Uh, and one more thing, guys. Uh, wherever you are, if you know someone who really wants to study in Ukraine, there is a number on the screen. Just say hi on WhatsApp and you will get all the answers you need.